What's up? This is O from CeeLo Air TV. Today we're going to be discussing a couple of things um, dealing with motorcycle and motorized bike safety and something that happened to me recently on my motorized bike. So first of all, I would like to say thank you to all of my new subscribers for tuning in to the channel. And I really appreciate you supporting in the questions and comments that you've had in the comment section. Oh, and for... Uh, I had a commenter that asked me about the patio cover, and yes, I'm finishing that. I just um, not recently ordered a panel, but I've had these panels maybe a couple of weeks. I just haven't um, got on the ladder and you know really installed those. But the panels are here. I went with a nice black color, and that'll be the last step with a couple finishing touches for the patio cover. So yes, the patio cover will be finalized before winter hits. But other than that, um, talking about the motorized bike, there's a couple of point of failures that can happen on this thing. And don't get me wrong, um, I use this bike for everything. Like uh, for example, when I get orders, I use it to deliver my um, orders. Um, anything I'm selling or whatever, I use it to pick up groceries and just joy riding. I mean, this thing is so much fun to ride. Took the bike out about 20 miles. About to head up in the mall. As you can see here, bike did good. Kind of opened wide up. When it was hitting those high RPMs, just added the new speedometer. I'll tell you where I got this later. But she did real good. Now I'm about to get up in here and get something to eat. Um, I love being able to like ride the motor and then cut the motor off and pedal at any given time. I mean, it's just an uncanny ability. Go to the park, wherever, just explore. And there's things I found in my city that I would have never found if I didn't ride this bike versus driving in a car. So I've done everything from grocery shopping, picking up stuff, um, joy riding, whatever you can think of, you can do on something like this. And this sparked a lot of ideas for me, like different frames that could be made uh, for different purposes. And we'll be getting to that later in the channel. But this video is mainly to discuss uh, motorized bike safety and some of the things I want to share just in case you decide to get into this and some things to look out for. Um, so that way you will have a, a more safer, better experience with uh, motorized bikes. So um, to be, well, basically break it down so i was riding down one of my main roads um just hitting it i just left the park and it was a great time and uh was riding down the road and all of a sudden um i hear a clank and this clank um locked up my motor and cut my motor off but i didn't stop i hit my brakes and i noticed that i was braking but i wasn't braking completely and I was kind of like power sliding almost as if, you know, you ever seen somebody ski down a hill. So that's what was going on. I was kind of skiing on pavement on the road. And um, long story short, I tried to handle it. I had it for about a good maybe five to eight seconds and I was controlling it to slow down. The next thing you know, I hit the ground and spun. I don't know if you ever played a... Uh, uh, Mario Kart 64 or Mario Kart where the little turtle you can shoot and you're spinning around on your back. So I slammed on the bike, slammed down, and then I, well, yeah, I slammed backward. That's better description. And my knee kind of flew, flew back and the bike fell on top of it. And then all of a sudden it was so much momentum. My bike slid and spun like this. And then I also spun like this on my back. Now, one thing I want to mention that's good is I would always carry um, repair tools on my bike because if I catch a flat or something, I do not want to walk my bike home. Or if I, I might be in a, a long distance, I do not want to, and let me step back a little bit. I do not want to walk this thing home. Um, even though it's a fairly light bike, um, to walk this thing or to try to pedal it home is a lot. Um, it's like a beach cruiser. It's not like a, a BMX or like a sports bike where it's more convenient to pedal. Even though the Shimano brakes are great on this thing because um, these are the most durable Shimano, sorry, not brakes, durable Shimano gear shift. So 
when I'm going uphill and I'm pedaling, uh, dude, it, it, you can adjust it. It's smooth as butter. Um, but it's still a beach cruiser, so it's still kind of like more of a heavier bike. Um, but anyway, I'm mentioning that to say, luckily I had, I didn't want to get too, too off track, but luckily I had my bag of tools on my back. I had two bags. One just to carry like random stuff like drinks, snacks or whatever, you know, I throw that on my back and then the tool bag. Now, the only reason why I had a tool bag and it's good I'm having this discussion, I had a bike rack on the back of it, um, but I think one time I even carried like a lawnmower, literal lawnmower. I found a lawnmower, electric lawnmower somebody was getting rid of. And you know, on this channel, we fix repair stuff and whatever. It's just what I like to do. It carried a whole freaking, this bike, no damage whatsoever, carry a whole freaking uh, lawnmower. And I'm just like, wow, I'm sold on this. So all these ideas started coming through my head of like what you could actually carry with one of these things. And uh, at that point, I noticed that one of the arms on the bike rack broke. Now this is one of those adjustable ones. And I said, mm, I don't think I want to repair this thing. So I'm just going to build one from scratch. So the next bike rack that's going to go on here is going to be a custom built one. There will be a video out for that. Anyway, I'm talking around. Normally I keep the tools on that, but because the bike rack is MIA out of commission, I had to carry my tools on my back, but luckily I did. I had my gloves on, had my helmet on, had my eyewear on. Now I covered that good, um, cause you gotta wear your eyewear because on the road, when if you ever drove in a car and the car in front of you is driving and then it kicks a rock at your windshield and cracks your windshield or puts a dent in your windshield that very well can get in your eye hit your tooth so always keep that in mind on the road you know most motorcycles have a windshield in the front to protect you from most of that and then you're putting your head in the windshield but if you don't have that or if you have like a traditional or old school like a bobber or something and the front is wide open you're gonna have to have some kind of shielding on your face so I had all that covered. I, if I wore my face shield up, I had glasses on, like protective glasses on to prevent that. So I'm thinking I'm good. When I fell, like I told you, on my back and started spinning like the daggone um, Mario Kart turtle, um, there was some cars coming down the road from me. Now on this particular road, I think you're only supposed to go like 35, 40, but you know, people don't drive speed limits, so they probably was going 55, 60. So I'm spinning down like this. My bike is spinning, now I'm spinning. I'm literally spinning. Like I see things coming around. I finally come to a stop. When I come to a stop, I'm facing the traffic coming towards me. Now, luckily, and this is why I'm mentioning this, the car slowed down long enough for me. I ran off first. Forget the bike. I ran off to the curb first, and I'm always riding close to the close to the sidewalk or the curb and you're not supposed to ride your, uh, your bike motorized on the sidewalk so I wasn't pedaling at the time I was hitting that motor I was going fast um, so after the fall I saw oncoming traffic coming and I didn't even think I just reacted I ran off to the edge and I noticed they slowed down for me and so I went ahead got my bike and then pulled it to the side and then I pulled out my tool. I noticed when I tried to just check it, visually it looked good, but I guess my adrenaline was running through me. Um, oh, I scuffed up my knees, scuffed up my elbow and the scar. One of my scars is still there. Um, scuffed up my knees pretty bad. And I've been out of riding this thing for about a week or so, week and a half. It took my skin off my knee. It's in healing now. Like most of my leg is healed pretty much. It's still scab on it. But I got one particular area that's going to take a little longer to heal. Uh, notice I'm scuffed up, feel the pain a little bit. I'm like, uh, I'm not worried about it. Looked at my bike and it was, um, looked visually fine. But I was trying to figure out what had locked up the motor and locked up the motor. Come to find out, this thing locked up my motor. So this is the rear fender and... Let me explain what a fender is good for. 
it keeps stuff off your wheel, but not only that, if you're raining, if you got dirt or rocks or anything comes up, this catches it first and gets it away from you. So it is a safety feature and it is important. One thing I didn't realize is these fenders, if I, if I can bring it in close on the camera, are very thin metal. See that? Very thin. And uh, this is good for just pedaling. This is not good for motorized bike because as you can see, the catastrophic failure was the mount broke off right there. Now, when the mount broke off, as you can see, it locked this way. These were still mounted to the frame. It went for it this way and locked up the wheel. When it locked up the wheel, it cut the engine off. And I was power sliding. I'm not lying here. This was like a ski. It got under the wheel like this. So there was no way for the wheel to roll or anything. So I was like skiing on this fender that had broke. Now, two parts where I messed up at. I'll show you the first part. This is my front fender. Now, my front fender started failing and breaking. As you can see, let me see if I can bend it so you can see it. Right there. And no catastrophic failure, no injury. And I said to myself, well, I'll reinforce it. Well, then I had I literally had intentions on repairing this fender and putting it back on the bike. Not anymore. So that was should have been my first sign. And then I read forums and I was listening to a few YouTube channels and they said that you need to take these off. Otherwise, they'll cause a catastrophic failure. I didn't think it would happen to me. That was my mistake. And next thing you know, my rear fender fails. Now, there was no sign of it failing. It mounted in three points. I made sure the bolts were tight on one, two, three points of contact. And it still failed. And this is what caused me to not be able to ride for going on almost two weeks. So, if you have a motorized bike and it has fenders, please, 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 I urge you and beg you, take the fenders off. Take them completely off. So, that's the biggest and main failure that I've had with this bike. But as far as when it took that impact, I pulled it up. Uh, checked around and found out that it was the fender that locked the motor up. I was like, dang, okay. So I went ahead and if I didn't have my tools with me, I would have had to walk the bike home or hydroplane it home or however I was doing it. And pull the tools out, took this fender off and emphasize, carry your tools with you. Just the tools, everything you need to unbolt your, your personal bike, carry your tools with you. Ended up getting the fender off. Try to pedal, boom, the pedal's locked up. So I looked around, looked around the bike and said, oh, the chain, the regular pedaling chain uh, locked up on one side of the sprocket, the pedaling sprocket. So I went ahead, took that off, fixed that up, and then I was able to pedal. And then uh, I think it was one more thing that might be wrong. Oh yeah, the handlebars had slipped and bent. So I didn't have the Allen wrench to tighten it up because there's like two different or a couple of different type of handlebars to tighten it to the fork. And I didn't have that Allen wrench. Or I didn't feel like, actually I did have the Allen wrench, but I didn't think to look for it. So I just kind of bumped the wheel back in alignment and did enough so I could ride home. And uh, did a little test run, cranked the engine back on. It was riding, but my knee was to the white meat, so to speak, as the old saying is to the white meat. A patch of my knee was scuffed up I guess the adrenaline was running through my veins so much, I didn't feel anything. So I was like, huh, let me just pop up. And I literally rode home. I probably was, what, 20 miles up? No, 15 miles up the road at a park from where I live at. And uh, patched it up. My wife patched it up. She did what she had to do. And um, I've been rotating patches and healing ever since. But this one healed really fast. That took only like, what, three days to patch up like that. And then you know how that goes with scars and stuff. But uh, that was one of my failures, but I've had a lot of failures before and it's just ignorance um, on my behalf. Like for example here, this was one of my rear tires and if you look right there, I didn't roll over a nail or nothing. 
This is from uh, an old inner tube filling it up with the stock air. This says you're supposed to fill it up to 40 PSI. I think it hit like 38 and it just boom burst, right? So I had to buy a whole new wheel. So I learned a couple things. I learned how to, uh, through my failures and failures, and the good thing about this video, I want to say failures are not a bad thing as long as you learn from it. And every accident and failure I've had with this bike, I learned from it. And not only did I learn how to build and repair bikes from everything that failed, I could have just threw this bike out when I got frustrated with it and got a whole new bike. But I feel like in life, you don't learn as much if you don't at least attempt to try to fix your problems and issues. So this had many problems. It's, not a, it's a love, love relationship. Although this bike does a lot that I hate, I think I've worked out most of the issues and learned some other things. So this is the second catastrophic failure, but this came before the last. This was like way before. This was months before, and I learned how to change the inner tube out and also uh, how to replace the tire. So that was good. Um, so second thing I want to say that what well, wasn't a failure, but inspired me to design something, and that's the chainstay. So what a chainstay does, this is the stock chainstay. And as you can see, it's like worn out and has chips in it. And I didn't like it was looking ugly, so I made my own chainstay. Now, this is very thick plexi, thicker than what this one was. Um, but let me tell you something about this. Just like with engineering, trial and error. I made this chain stay and you can see some of the wear on the clearness that, that that ring right there. Pay attention to diameters because the center diameter of this one much bigger. See, it's bigger. This one is smaller. So they made this so it won't unwind your your free will or your cassette. What I'm talking about, I'll leave a picture up here if I can. But your main cassette that has all your gears so when you ship. So what my first design did, because I made this hole too small, kept unwinding my chain, uh, my uh, free wheel. Kept unwinding my free wheel. So I would pedal and thing would come apart. And so I was like, oh, now I finally find out there's a flaw in my chain stay design. So the one on the bike now that I replaced has a bigger center, about the same size as this one, and in black. So I'm, I'm thinking about selling those on my store. So I'll do a separate, either short or community post if I do them in different colors. And if you want to check out one of my chain stays, they're great, much bigger than the stock ones that they give you. So that's another thing that failed on me, but that was a custom part. Another thing that failed um, is my spokes. So because of the motorized bike, you have a set of gears on both sides like regular bike you have one but motorized bike you got two what that does is it's sandwiched in between some rubber the the spokes um are sandwiched in between rubber so if a spoke ever break like i had three spokes to break at the top and i didn't realize that i had my uh brake set too low on the rim and it was breaking the spokes at the top of the wheel so i readjusted my brake pads so it would just lock onto the rim, okay? Um, but I had to constantly change those out. But the problem is, if you get a spoke that's in that sandwich with the gear, you literally have to take the whole wheel apart, unscrew the spoke on the hub, and replace the spoke on the hub, then sandwich all those layers of bolts in the gears back together. So I've had several breaks on the spokes and I realized two reasons. The wheel wasn't true. You have to adjust the wheel to line up the spokes and the, the brakes were breaking them. So I adjusted that. And the third reason uh, why they were particularly breaking because they were not uh, fastened well enough in there. Uh, I would say um, for bumps and running over tracks and potholes that the 14 gauge spokes that come with it are too thin. So I want to upgrade to like 12 gauge spokes and up. I really want 10 gauge spokes. So I might have to design a custom hub. I'll probably make it out of steel, stainless steel or something like that. I don't want to do aluminum because I've noticed aluminum 
uh, wheels crack. Now let me show you the hub that I pulled off of this. That's a, my fourth failure on the bike is the hub. Let me pull the hub and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Now in between me talking about this uh, other part that failed on the bike, I just want this information to be useful to you if you are considering a motorized bike or just bike riding in general. Um, what failures can happen, what to look out for, and to make sure you have your safety gear and be smart when you're out there. So um, there will be a part of the video at the end where there's a little bike tour and I can show some things. You can skip that if you like or if you enjoy watching it, watch it. But I talk about some of those areas on the bike itself. This is the hub and this is the actual original hub that came with the bike. There's nothing wrong with the make of the bike. It's fine. I noticed that putting the hub and the extra weight on this particular hub uh, may have contributed in the wearing, but if you look here, that is hollowed out. There's supposed to be a wall there that holds your bearings. That makes this hub spin, makes your wheel spin. Well, you can see it on this side. There it is. And that inner wall is missing. As you can tell, it's hollow on that side. Reason why this hub is the same style hub as what's on the bike. And I will be upgrading that hub to one that takes the cassette bearings. And if I could leave a picture on the screen, I'll leave this picture right here of what a cassette bearing is. Uh, but basically it's all encased and it puts the wear on the bearing itself. So in that case, that will be, uh, so this won't happen again where the wall wears in because the bearings are just sitting in here with a cap and then your axle goes through that. So um, when I was tightening the wheel down, I noticed that it would be straight for like five seconds and then wobble. And I said, well, wait a minute, I'm adjusting the wheel. It should be, you know, straightening up and staying straight. Come to find out that the wall inside of the hub was non-existent. It, just, it was finito, it was not there. So it was basically riding on the bearings itself. Um, so yeah, so I'll be working probably on a, either the custom hub. Um, thinking I'm thinking about maybe turning one on a lathe or something like that. Maybe use stainless steel, something you know durable. And this is a 36 folk, and there's other ones you can get. So that's my either fourth or fifth failure. So fenders failed. Bike hub failed. Chain stay didn't fail, but it's cracked up and I replaced it. So that we can say that failed. Um, gas line. Now, I don't know if you can see on the camera. This is called a pet cock, and this is the pet cock is on like all sorts of lawnmower engines and stuff like this. This one, this engine is more designed like a, a motorcycle engine. Um, the other bike I'm building now, I'll show you a tour before this video is out of the other um, beach cruiser that I'm turning into a motorized bike. That motor is going to get 160 miles to the gallon. This one gets 80. It's more designed like a, a traditional motorcycle style engine with the vertical pistons. Um, but yeah, so speaking on the gas line, all your motors, like small engine motors, have a pet cock, okay? And this gas line down here, the only thing that failed is just slipped off a little bit. And so what I had to do was um, put like a clamp on that and then a zip tie, and that took care of it. Um, your carburetor can also have air gaps. So what I did was put rubber around it, put some tape around it, and then I put this, uh, I don't know what you call it, like carbon fiber, like motorcycle exhaust tape on that. And that kind of helped from the air suctioning out. It's not perfect, but if you get um, perfect compression, uh, it will give you more power in your motor, more speed in your motor, more efficiency in your motor. So right now it's doing pretty good, but as you can see, um, the darker areas is from some sort of air leak and some of the carbon gets out. So I'll be working on that on this bike. So um, another point of failure was my gas line, fix that. And then my carburetor, the air leak, so I had to fix that too. Um, but this was the main one that put me out the game. 
which is the fender locking up and locked my motor up. I had me literally skiing on not the highway, but it was a main road and I lost it from there. But one thing I want to show before we get out of here and I show you my other bike that is going to be the new, that's going to be like my long distance bike, um, you know, to travel long distances around the city. Um, this is what was left of my brakes, my rear brakes. And like I said, I got some actually coming today. And um, this is all that's left of it. This little broken off piece is all that's left of my uh, rear brakes. So what happened was, and I'll see if I can find the other piece. So I'm going to put it in the bag. Okay, it's not here. So I'll just illustrate with this. So what happened was on the rear part of the wheel, so because, yeah, it was this side, no, this side, because the fender broke, boom, it slid and locked up and then dragged the brake with it, which caused it to bend. No good, no good. So uh, I tried to bend one side back and this is the one half that didn't break. When I tried to bend the other half, yeah, that mug broke off. So, you know. It happens. In life, stuff happens. That's the old saying, you know, it happens or however you, however you label it. But anyway, so that will be my fifth or sixth failure. But like I said, things with a bike, especially like, you know, your inner tubes can go out. I had to like duct tape where the spokes were because the rim itself actually failed and one of the spokes pulled through and I had to put a washer in and wind it. But I chalked it up to I'm going to use more durable wheels and uh, either more durable bike wheels or I'll upgrade to uh, dirt bike or motorcycle wheels and then custom frames and we'll get into that. It'll be a fun video and everything. But um, I've rambled on enough. Let me show you a tour of the second beach cruiser that's going to be my long distance bike and that's going to have a four stroke. 160 miles to the gallon engine. This is my two stroke uh, 80 miles to the gallon engine and let me show you that before the video's out. So this is my new Kent Sea Change. Okay and as you know fenders are coming off because <laughs> I ain't trying to hurt myself again. Um, this one is a little different from the other beach cruiser. There's no support beam in the front. I might add a little support pole right here. Um, it's wide open, nice for a four stroke engine, 49 cc. Um, these spokes are pretty thin, so that's going to get upgraded. Um, only thing I've added on this bike so far is the cup holder, cell phone combo holder. That's it. Um, this one has coaster brakes, so I have to figure out how that works with the motorized bike. We'll find out if I got to take it off or whatever, but I'm going to replace C-shaped front and rear brakes. Um, I thought about disc, but I read some things where disc brakes can fail or lock up and have you power sliding. So I don't know. I haven't decided on that yet. I think the uh, C-clamp style brakes are more surefire. And I'm going to go with that. But this is going to be, once we get some build videos out, this is going to be my long distance rider right here. So if the other bike lasts six months on five gallons of gas, this one will last a year on it. So isn't that amazing that five gallons will last you the whole year? But um, anyway, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you for watching. And check me out on my next video. Take care.